John Zamparelli of Senior Style. I'm delighted tonight, today rather, to be televised in the West Medford community, but more especially in the home of Maybury Counts, known to many of us as Doc and others as Mabe. Welcome, Mabe. Thank you, John. Well, I want to say first, I want to thank the Channel 3, is it? Yes. For honoring me as representing not Doc Counts, but the senior citizens of Medford, the handicapped people, the people who are confined and sick. I've been through all those stages, and I just represent them, and I'm proud to have that privilege. For myself, I don't feel that I'm that great to be so honored, but I would take these honors for my people and all of the families here of the West Medford community. Uh, I would say that in answer to your question, how long have I been here? All my family's been here. I'm 77 and my, we had a family of 10 children to the Count's family. And at this time, we have four surviving all above the age of 70, two brothers and two sisters. My sister Madeline Duggar Kelly, who is 90. My other sister Vivian Russell, my brother Almar, and myself. Um, I wish you'd tell the people about the remarkable achievements, uh, not to brag about your nieces and nephews, but as an example long before it became fashionable, how just plain good old Americans and citizens of this great city of Medford, and how far back they go and what they've achieved here by just ordinary brain power and respect. Tell us about, uh, let's start with Eddie Duggar. Well, Eddie Duggar, as you know, was a captain of Tufts University in track. He also played football. He was one of the first black aeronautical engineers to graduate and to serve the government at Dayton, Ohio. Barbara Ann Furst, she was the eldest, and she had to go south to teach at Palmer Memorial Institute. And I own is now the dean of the School of Social Studies at Temple University in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And, uh, and Cortland Duggar is also a Tufts University graduate, and he's down in Maryland doing yeah, excellently. Right. He worked for the government. He worked for the National Science Foundation. He's a, on the outstanding physical chemist in the country and in, in crystal growth. And he has patents, many patents, at Washington, D.C. today. And Portia has been a teacher in Boston. She served the Boston School Committee. And uh, all of the Duggar family have made good, not only the Duggar family, but I, I'm, I'm an uncle of a million kids. And all of those people, not only my family, I don't want to have people think that we're just an exceptional family. We're not an exceptional family. All of the people in this community are unique and, and progressive people, and that's why I wrote the book. You've lived a, a, an illustrious life yourself. Incidentally, did you ever marry? I never married because when I was at the age of 10, they gave me up as not going to be able to live beyond those years. What happened was they sent me to away. They thought I had TB and I didn't have it. And what they sent me away to an institution and I got a, a uh, illness that I had to be rushed back to the children's hospital where they saved my life. And so that when I found out that uh, I might not be able to be well through my life and I've been sick most of my life, I decided not to marry. Here's a book that, that uh, I know that you uh, had published and it says this is your heritage and uh, uh, a newspaper man's research, sketches, views, and comment, United States hometown and world history by May Doc Kuntz. Incidentally, you have quite a few names. Uh, do you favor Mabe or Doc or Mabry if you want to be uh, more formal? I'll take Doc because one time I wanted to be a doctor. I was in the hospital so many times in and out that. <laughs> then this other one says, 50 sports years 
along memory lane. Afro-American sports history, hometown, local, national, 1900-1950s by Mae Doc Kuntz. Once again, uh, uh, it says, author, this is your heritage. And former sports editor, Boston Chronicle, Boston Guardian, former sports writer, Negro Associated Press, and National Negro Association of Sports Editors. That tells it all uh, from another view. And I want you to hold that up also. 50 years of sports, his research. I will say this, that I come up through the Negro press, and thank God we opened the door so kids can come on now on television and uh, the daily papers. In my day, we couldn't do that. And this is a part that I'm proud about. We helped to break those barriers down. And right now on the wall behind me is a award I received from Boston College as being a griot, historian griot, which is the highest in Africa that they give the man who t tells the stories of the people, the history. And in 1984, I was called the Boston College, and the president of Boston College presented me with the griot award, which you see on the wall. So we made some progress through the sacrifice of as you just mentioned. I'm and happy to hear that. I know you would be. And One of my biggest supporters, even on the book, was Cardinal Cushing, the friend of all men. I think he was one of the greatest religious men. And he was, he offered me his prayers when I was in the hospital. He contributed to my book. He said, he said he was in this before it was fashionable to be into it, as you know. And he has been, he started with the colored, uh, uh, as, a, as a priest in the colored part of Boston years and years ago. And I will say this, that on the wall there in the corner, Angie Murata had me bring this book into the State House, and he put it in the State Archives, because we were all proud of Medford, regardless of our race or color and religion. Uh, George and Mrs. Brooks, and her name was uh, Susan Hallowell, of the Hallowells family. Uh, and you know the Hallowell family, they contributed to the command of black troops in the Civil War. and. During their livelihood here in Medford, they had me promise they would not have me announce that they had contributed toward this black, first black history of Medford as long as they lived. And as you know, they both lived to be 100. So now that they have gone, I want people to know that these white people, white Americans, they called Yankees in those days, could contributed to the first black history of Medford. Judge and Mrs. Lawrence G. Brooks. I want to also give my thanks to Mr. Roland Parthy and the Parthy of Brothers, who published the first black history of Medford. And I think it's one of the first black histories of any town in, in New England. And they were very supportive, and they contributed toward the book. And I want to thank all people who contributed toward this book. And I want to make a note on the wall there that I've uh, letters from the presidents, two presidents of the United States received copies of the book. One was President Carter, and the other one's President Reagan. And this, I put them in a picture frame back there on the wall. And I also want to thank so many people in the Shallow Baptist Church and the community center and all of the people in this community who were supportive of me in this work. And I feel that I've done a mission that people wanted me to do on both races. And I want to thank you and, and others who have come to the uh, aid of our people and spoken so well of this community, which goes back to the colored people in Medford, go back to the 1700s when there were free black men in Medford among the first free black men in the colonies. And one was Prince Hall, who was a member of the Medford militia and who was known for the black masonry that he organized. We have had black men in this city from the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, Spanish-American, the two world wars, and every war up to the present time, the Medford Colorment of black patriots have been consistent. In fact, in World War II, there was no draft needed in Medford Colored District because it already belonged to military units. We've had people here serving the Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, Air Force and every branch of the service, and we're proud of it. 
And if you go through this community, you'll see different memorials to the military people, including Colonel Duggar Park and uh, other areas. So I can't say enough to thank everyone who has contributed to this black history. It's not just our council's history. It's the people, the senior citizens asked me to write this book. They came to me, and, and we, we, it came from the celebration of the Shallow Baptist Church 50th anniversary. And I happened to be looking through my papers and found out the date, and they said, you go ahead and write a history of this community. And so I was commissioned to write this book. I never made any money from it, but I was commissioned. So I feel it's a special book. I'm proud, and this city is proud, of our little community in West Medford in which have congregated those of the black race. This is John Zamparelli, your host of Senior Style, saying so long until next time.